Welcome to the Babylon 5 Alliance. My name is Eric Rupp, and I am your host. On today's show, we are going to be talking about Stargate, SG-1, and Atlantis. Which one is the better show? Well, in this, really, there isn't a necessarily a better show. It's just which one do you like more, and why do you feel the way that you do? I'm going to be going over today what I think and how, what my feelings are about that and why that is. And we're going to go over a number of things, including the characters, the setting, the stories, uh, a number of things to go over why I think one of the shows is better than the other. But right up front, right off the bat, I do want to say this. I love both shows. I love SG-1. I started watching that when it was on in the 90s, when it was a new show, and I Believe it or not, I actually skipped Atlantis until it came out on DVD. I, I can I can tell you exactly why I did that. And this kind of kind of chimes into part of the discussion about setting and characters and the big bad and all that. But the reason I skipped Atlantis the first time around was because when I read that it was going to be about uh, well, the big bad, the, the bad guys in Atlantis were going to be basically space vampires. I immediately got a flashback to the old Buck Rogers episode with the space vampire. I don't know how many of you saw that episode. It's good, cheesy fun, but it is super cheesy, as was basically the whole Buck Rogers series. It was campy intentionally, but... I started getting visions of that. And I thought, man, that's not what I want from Stargate. I don't want to have space vampires. So I just skipped it. And then years later, I found a copy of the pilot episode, the two-part movie for Atlantis. And I got it for two bucks. And I thought, why not? Let me give this a shot. And I watched it. And I'll be honest with you. That was one of the times that I felt the stupidest in my life. I watched that and I thought, oh my God, this isn't at all what I thought it was going to be. This is a freaking great pilot movie. This is awesome. And I felt like a fool for skipping the entire series. So... The first thing I did was I went out and bought all five seasons on DVD and I binge watched that thing. And I'll tell you what, that was a revelation. It was really nice to see just how good Atlantis was because I had been such a big fan of SG-1 and to have some new Stargate years later, because at this point it was about a year after Atlantis had gone off the air that I actually watched it. So it, it ended up being something new for me, but I still felt like I missed out the first time around. So if we're going to talk about Stargate, then we need to circle all the way back to 1994 and the Dean Devlin Roland Emmerich movie, just Stargate. And that was a good movie. It had a novel take on sci-fi because it went back to the past, went into modern day, had aliens, a lot of different things going on that were very different from the other movies of the time. Um, and, it was something that the people at MGM obviously recognized would make for a good series. And they had eventually turned to Brad Wright and Jonathan Glasner to develop a TV show based on that movie. Now, it became pretty clear right away that they were not going to get Kurt Russell and James Spader in the series. That wasn't going to happen. But they did know that they wanted uh, Daniel Jackson and Colonel O'Neill to be the main characters of the series. And to flesh out the show, they came up with new characters, Teal, uh, Samantha Carter, and General Hammond. And with each of these characters, they just knocked it out of the park when it comes to casting. So you had Richard Dean Anderson as Jack O'Neill. Fans knew him as MacGyver. He was inspired casting. It gave them a chance to come up with a much more likable version of Jack O'Neill as well. That was a big plus. Uh, Michael Shanks as Daniel Jackson inspired casting again he was not a, a name actor but he actually took the cinematic daniel jackson and improved on him for the series and he made the character his own amanda cap 
Amanda Tapping as Samantha Carter. She was phenomenal casting, and she has become a fan favorite uh, just um, among science fiction fans in general. Anybody who's watched Stargate loves Amanda Tapping, and with good reason. And, of course, Christopher Judge as Teal'c. Another, I mean, just each one of these actors for their characters, they knocked it out of the park. Even Don S. Davis as General Hammond. Don S. Davis, not a great actor, a good actor, but not a great actor. But like Jerry Doyle on Babylon 5, sometimes you don't want a great thespian who's this great Lawrence Olivier type actor to play your character. You want somebody who seems more real. And that's what Don S. Davis brought to that character. He made him seem real. You bought him as a an Air Force general. So the cast on SG-1 was phenomenal. The characters were great. And that was something that really made SG-1 work. Well, it was actually the number one thing that made SG-1 work. The the overall setting, the big bad with the Goa'uld, all of that was good. It was great. But it would not have mattered if they had not done such a great job of creating great characters and casting them correctly, which they did. Now, you compare that to Atlantis. So let's talk about the characters and the actors. So with Atlantis... At that point, they've got seven years of Stargate SG-1 under their belt. They know how to make a Stargate show. And this time, it's Brad Wright and Robert Cooper creating the series. And they are not trying to make just a carbon copy of SG-1. They can't do that. There's no point to doing that. So they put it in the Pegasus Galaxy on the lost city of Atlantis, which is actually not on Earth. It had been on Earth, but it was a city that was also a ship. A concept that's kind of out there, but it works in context of the show. And they get to that city, and there's all sorts of problems. You know, the, the city has, has the power depleted. They've got to fight with that issue. With you know, they're underwater. The whole thing that it starts off with is fantastic there, and so you get a very different setting. But you've got also a very different set of characters on Atlantis. You've got Doctor Weir, who is a civilian, so she's kind of the Daniel Jackson. Of of her uh, crew, where only she's in charge. And so she had briefly been in charge of the SGC. They move her to being in charge of Atlantis, and she's a great character. Tori Higginson did a great job in the role, originally played by Jessica Steen from Earth 2 uh, in a two-part SG-1 episode. There were some issues there with her commitment to the show, so they recast it with Tori Higginson, and she came in and made the part her own. She was ideal deal for the part she did a great job you had joe flanagan as john shepherd major john shepherd when they started the show he's kind of sort of the 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 jack o'neill of his team but he's very different a very different character uh than jack o'neill and he works really well again Great casting, great character. Yet Rodney McKay ported over from SG-1, who was a recurring character there, been on two or three times on SG-1. The most likable jerk on TV, sort of. I mean, he was the most likable, unlikable person I've ever seen on TV. I love the character of Rodney McKay because he is self-absorbed. He's arrogant. He's, you know very much uh, inconsiderate of other people, and yet at the same time, he wants to do the right thing, and he's willing to risk his life time and time again to save others. So a very interesting character. Gotta love him. Um, Now, the one area where Atlantis kind of faltered was in the kind of the security guy of that team, Um, sort of. So that was Aiden Ford, um, and he was played by Rainbow Sun Franks. A good character, but not a standout character. And, and that was the, the issue they had in the first season, was that he was solid. But whereas every single character on SG-1 was just incredible, or just ideal for the show, Ford was eminently disposable. He was just kind of there. Good But when they replaced him for the second season with the character of Ronan, things got better. And they actually were found a way to make Ford uh, more interesting by making him a recurring character and giving him more of an issue there. Uh, So that was uh, 
a situation where the cast had a, a one week spot in the first season, but everybody else in the cast was great. In fact, Paul McGillian um, as Carson Beckett, Dr. Carson Beckett, the uh, medical doctor of the of the uh, expedition, he was just fantastic. One of my favorite doctors ever on TV. You got to love him. Paul McGillian was just great in the role. Uh, and he became, he was intended originally just to be recurring every now and then, but then he became a regular because fans loved him so much. And the, the actor, Paul McGillian, he did just such a great job in the role. So everything just kind of worked there. So when you're looking at the cast and the characters, SG-1 versus Atlantis, really, you've got to say that the shows are dead even there. There's no advantage to either show. The characters are great, equally great on both shows. Even as time went on in Atlantis, when they had like uh, Colonel Caldwell come in, he was great. Uh, and I loved the cast changes to SG-1 as Richard Dean Anderson had family commitments and he backed off the show. They brought in Ben Browder and Claudia Black from Farscape and they became great parts of the show. So I would say that across the board, the casts were equal for both both shows there really isn't an advantage for either show both were great now when it comes to the setting for the shows i tend to give atlantis a slight advantage just being in a different galaxy on an alien city an advanced alien city where that's their base of operations it really made the show more interesting more exciting uh more fascinating it just it had a little something extra now that's not to say there was the least bit wrong with the sgc setting in cheyenne mountain for sg1 that was a great setting and you don't get to atlantis without going through what they went through out of cheyenne mountain and that was kind of interesting you've got that below norad it's this super secret base uh you, know, you got all that there, there's a lot of neat stuff going on and they're going throughout our galaxy having all these adventures so that was still a great setting but when you go to another galaxy on you know the ancient city that's super high tech and, and much more advanced than we are i give a, a small advantage there to atlantis now how about the stories because that would ultimately that's what it comes down to and the best stories on both shows were excellent i mean just fantastic stories you had great two-parters atlantis had a three-parter uh at the end of the first season and the beginning of the second season just really really good stuff i i mean i would even in the first season of atlantis and this is something that goes into the next thing you know, they kind of tie together the stories and the consistency of the show atlantis because they had gone through seven seasons of SG-1, the writers, directors, the producers, they were all able to hit the ground running. All this stuff that SG-1 went through in the first two years, kind of gaining their footing, kind of figuring the shows out, figuring out what they were going to do plot-wise and, and story arc-wise, all that sort of thing as they were learning as they were going and kind of figuring it out. Atlantis didn't have that problem. They had some great shows right away in the first season. And, I mean, right in the middle of the first season, you had The Storm and The Eye, a phenomenal two-parter with the Jedi. Uh, we have a strike team coming in and trying to take over Atlantis uh, during a massive super hurricane. It, it was just a great two-part episode, one of the highlights of the series, and it came right in the first season. There was no episode in the first season of SG-1 that was equivalently good there were great episodes later on in the series tons and tons of great episodes uh on sg1 that were easily as good as the storm of the eye and a lot that were better but there was also and this is where we tie into your stories into consistency story-wise when you're talking about the best stories and the good stories yeah they're they're dead even in terms of that it's not like the highlights of sg1 were better than the highlights of atlantis or vice versa they're even when it comes to the best quality of the stories but where sg1 falters is in those first two seasons maybe even as much as the first three seasons there were some episodes that just were not as good as what the show became later some very average yeah in the first season very Star Trekian kind of themes and whatnot. And it just 
didn't really feel right. It felt more generic uh, in the first season of SG-1 a lot. They started getting their footing about halfway through that season, uh, and at the end of the season, they really started to get it. And from the second season on, it started getting better, and by the time they got to the third or fourth season, the, you know, they were firing on all cylinders. But Atlantis didn't have that issue of having to find their footing. They were they had it right right away, as I was saying. They hit the ground running. So on that standpoint, while stories, the, the best stories, it's even the consistency of the quality of the show has to go to Atlantis because they didn't have nearly as many skippable episodes as SG-1 did. Even as late as the eighth season, there were... Episodes of SG One they were very skippable. Episodes you're just like, eh, not this one again. You watch it two or three times, and you're kind of done with it. That really isn't true on Atlantis, with just a couple of exceptions. Um, and so that's where you've got to give that one to Atlantis. So then, okay, so we've gone over settings, we've gone over characters and stories and consistency. But how about the big bad? On SG One, you had the Goa'uld. And that was what created the Stargate universe. That's the bad guys that they set it on. And it was just fantastic. So that was a great big bad. Then they added the Replicators. And that was another enemy that was very different from anything we had seen before because they were not an enemy you could negotiate with. They were not an enemy that could be reasoned with. They were just an infestation, more or less. And they would destroy you if you didn't find a way to stop them. So the replicators, it was new. Now, they did run that one into the ground. They went a little too far, did it a few too many times. But overall, the replicators, that was a great addition. And then finally, they closed off the series with the Ori. There are a lot of people who are not big fans of the Ori as the big bad in the Ori storyline over the last two seasons. Personally, I think the Ori... And the last two seasons are some of the highlights of the entire series for SG-1. Great episodes, great stories, something new, a new idea, a new concept that these godlike beings are going to make everybody in our galaxy worship them or die. It's like worship us or die. And that was something where they had the power to make it happen. And so trying to fight an enemy that powerful was really something they needed to do because the Stargate program, the Stargate command, they had become a spacefaring power. They had their own battleships and they had their own fighters for space. So they needed a more powerful enemy and the Ori was just what the doctor ordered. It was ideal. So the bad guys on SG-1, you cannot say a bad thing about other than the replicators were done maybe a little too much. On Atlantis, you had the Wraith. And I mentioned this up, uh, up front. I thought it was going to be like just cheesy space vampires. It wasn't. They found a way to do it where it wasn't just vampires or anything like that. It was they sucked the life force out of people and that's how they survive. And it was a really interesting way that they carried it out so the wraith ended up being just a phenomenal bad guy that made it through the entire run of the series but then they also added uh, you know, some other antagonists the Janai, other humans who didn't agree with uh, the Stargate personnel who had taken over Atlantis. They were very self-centered. Uh, they had their own way of doing things, and they were not going to let anybody else get in their way. If you were going to support them, great. But if you had any other ideas, you were a threat to them, and they were going to get rid of you. And so that was an interesting way to go there with the Janai. I liked them. And then you had the new human form replicators uh, that they came up with that they did maybe one to once too often, but I think that it, that ended up working really well on Atlantis. So when you talk about the big bad, the bad guys across the board, you've got to really give no advantage to either one. Both series dead even. So really, the only advantages that I see are that the setting on Atlantis is a little more interesting. It's a little more fun. Uh, it's a little more exotic. Uh, so I give the edge for the setting to Atlantis and consistency goes to Atlantis because they didn't have as many uh, off episodes as SG-1 had. So overall, I give the edge to Atlantis. I think Atlantis was the better show of the two. Both were great shows. I, I rewatched them 
every year or two as it stands now. I still keep going back to these shows because they're so much fun to watch. I'm in the middle of an Atlantis rewatch right now and SG-1. I'm doing both of them, which I typically do. I'll start with SG-1, and when I get to Season 8, I'll be watching both. So it really is a lot of fun to see how that goes. But yeah, i, I got to give the uh, edge to Atlantis, but both are great. So if you like SG-1 more, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people do. All right. Anyway, what do you think? What is your pick between the two shows? Or would you come out of left field and say that Stargate Universe was your favorite? I didn't bring that one up into this because it was too different. But if you prefer Universe, you can also uh, post down below why you believe that and why you feel that way about that show. All right. Well, again, my name's Eric Rupp. Glad to talk to you about Stargate. And I hope you have a great day. Catch you on the next show. Bye-bye.